Right, now, um, we've got the um, Albert Bartlett coming up now, and this one is sponsored by the Stonehouse restaurant, Black Rock County Louth. Uh, Horst has been tipped uh, very strongly for this race for quite some time as Tyne Hill. Uh, Monkfish is in there <coughs> as second favourite. Astor and Falange has another engagement. Uh, latest exhibition has been doing things okay. Last couple of runs. And um, the big getaway also has another uh, engagement. Tyne Hill is at the top of the market there. Uh, Ronan, are you a Tyne Hill yeah, fan he, this horse has been at the top of the market no, for he's, look he's done nothing wrong he's top of the market he he's not a horse that's flashy he's not going to win five six lengths but he's done nothing wrong and he's probably the type of horse you need for this race uh, i think they wanted to go to Ballymore initially and coming up here just to avoid envoy allen which doesn't always inspire confidence but he probably deserves to be favored look monkfish is a nice horse i let david talk about him um, I was down at Willie's Press morning and he was just worried that maybe this might come too soon for him, but he's, I think he's a big, massive horse that he's going to be a chaser next year. Uh, latest exhibition, I'd love to see win for Paul Nolan and Brian Cooper. I thought he did it beautifully at Leopardstown. He looks a real honest horse, stays all day. This race looks absolutely made for him. But the one I, I like is uh, Colin Tizard's horse there, Harry Senior. Um, I think Tizard's been talking about running this horse over three miles all year and the fact that he's been able to run so well over two and a half miles and he actually won a race that's produced two winners of this race in the last ten years uh, at Fisher's Cross, won at the two and a half, two and a half mile grey two there at the trials day, uh, at Fisher's Cross won it, came up to three miles and won and another horse whose name escape, escapes me now. Uh, but that's a good trial for this race. Um, I just see him coming to me in his own over three miles. He's a real kind of dagger stare about him, and uh, he'd be—I'd be keen enough on Harry Senior there at eight to one. S savage stamina required there, and if, if the ground happens to be bad on the last day, that that would be a real stamina test. Um, that uh, Albert Bartlett over three miles. Ian um, Tyne Hill or for you, or do you find something more yeah. valuable in the race? Yeah, maybe I'll go for Paul Nolan's horse. It'd um, be great to see Paul getting the winner at a big meeting again. He's um, He'll definitely stick on. It's a funny race that you often get a few big price winners in it. But um, our lad would have a chance, Fury Road. He was disappointing the last day in Leperstown. Before that, he was very impressive in Limerick. And had won before, he's won a couple of races before that. He could put a line maybe through the last day. He has to improve for the last day, but I think. He could, at a price, a big enough price for one of ours, he could run well. You need a soft? Yeah, he probably does. He was very soft and he probably, probably would suit him better than he did in Leperstown that day. He's, his run the last day does need improving on, but he'd, he'd have, a, he'd have a, a small each way chance. If I was having a bet, I'd probably do latest exhibition. Latest exhibition. Um, Thomas, um Latest exhibition um, came on the scene there with a shock victory at Navan, but he backed it up then with a win at Leperstown. Yeah, he did. Um, I suppose he really came on the scene when he bet Andrew Dufresne in Navan. Um, everyone kind of thought Andrew Dufresne was just going to turn up and, and walk. And to be fair, he's backed it up by beating Cobbler's Way and Longhouse Poet in the thing. Just saying, it would be great for racing, even for the likes of Paul Nolan to train another Cheltenham Festival winner. Like, just shows like how hard training horses is. It's a man that had umpteen horses going back years ago, and he was literally he was he, he was nearly out of the game, wasn't he? Like he he had gone to just a couple of horses. He's the, one of the finest places that you could train horses in, and like it just shows you how hard and just how lucky you need to be to have these owners. And that um, it'd be great for the game to see someone like Paul again. Just one horse at a price, um, Longhouse Poet uh, for Martin Brazel. Uh, Martin knows how to train a festival winner with City Island winning the Ballymore last year. Um, if you look at this horse when he was third to Envoy Allen in Nace, if you look at the ground that he's made up from the back of the last to the finish line, he's caught eight to ten lengths on Envoy Allen, and Envoy Allen's not stopping as well, to be fair to him, in Nace that day. Um, he's backed it up by being a close third to latest exhibition and Cobbler's Way was second. Um, if Martin can, if he can ink out a, li a little bit of improvement in this lad, he, he won't be far away either, um, just at a price. Yeah, the decent run that day, that day at Nace, I saw him finishing, so Alexia Dan, was second. Uh, Brendan, your idea of the Albert Bartley winner? 
<coughs> I'm a Longhouse house poet fan, Desi. I think Martin Brazel is a really canny operator. Can get them ready for the big day. Um, his client, the Mulryans, have put an awful lot of money into horses in the last two years. Um, I don't think you've seen the best of this fella. I think Cheltenham has been the plan from a long way out. Um, I would love Paul Nolan to have a winner at Cheltenham. I think Paul's very good for racing and is an excellent trainer. But you've no real idea how hard it is, this training game. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I have great respect for Martin Brazel. I think this horse has been got ready for one day and I think he, he will turn the tables on Paul's horse on Leopardstown Farm at Cheltenham. And uh, Frank, uh, your view? Yeah, this is a really tough race. Like Since the last favourite won this, the prices of the horses that have won have been 50 to 1, 33 to 1, 16 to 1, 11 to 1, 14 to 1 and 33 to 1. So that'll tell me that the market is liking the wrong type of horse for this race. You want something like a really strong dower stair. Um, it's not uncommon for second season novices to win. I'd agree with the lads about Longhouse Paul. I think he's crying out for a test of stamina. My one worry would be is that because he's owned by Sean Munro, who sponsors the Ballymore, that he might run the Ballymore. Yeah, um, he, he definitely won't. He won't. That's good. Yeah, he'd definitely have a very good each way chance. There's another one that's in the pretense as well that um, is a big price if you ran here, and that's one for the team for Nick Williams. Um, second season novice. He was beaten twice over two and a half miles last year. But on his hurdles debut, I thought he'll win a nice race. He, he just showed a lot. He was a bit inexperienced. Stepped up to three miles this year, was second at Worcester, followed by a really unlucky run at Newbury in a handicap of 126. He then qualified for the pretense, finishing third up at Warwick off 130. You'd say that's not good enough for an Amber Barlett, but the last day at Newbury, when he got a bit of good ground, he absolutely bolted up. He won by 14 lengths, but you could call it all over turning in. It was really impressive. Um, he's still only six, and he's improving at the right time. I'd just be afraid that they'll take the easier option of going for pretence. But I thought if you ran here, he's just the typical under the radar horse with experience and stamina. That could uh, surprise. He's about 25 to 1. Uh, and the right Not price. Pardon? And right, the right price. price. Like 25, like, don't be afraid. Like Longhouse Port, my, my shortlist was Mossy, Mossy Fenn, one for the team in Longhouse Port. I think they're all about at least 16 to 1 or bigger. Like, they just have experience and, uh, yeah. Like, the, the market goes for the sexy type that wins in the bridle and they get found out a lot in this. Look for value. Uh, the lads are saying it would be great for uh, Paul Nolan to lay his exhibition to win. It would be also great for Brian Cooper, who had a Gold Cup victory in Don Cossack and seems to be the forgotten young man of the game, but it would be a great fillip for both of them. Um, how do you see it, David? It's mad to say it would be great for Paul Nolan and Brian Cooper. Like, if Brian Cooper walked in here three years ago, there would be lads lining up to throw stones mm -hmm. at him, like, you know? Yeah. Um, I know, I know they're saying Jays wouldn't it be great for him. It's amazing the way things just turn around. Um, maybe that's the Paul Nolan effect on people. I don't know. Um, yeah, funny race. You need a horse that's been through the shit really. That needs to have um, needs to have got beat a few times. Can't be doing that in flash. Normally doesn't get home. Um, I like a horse. I don't see him in the betting there, and I'm not even 100% sure if he runs. But A1. Um, he's a big tree miter of Willie's. It's definitely the race for him. He's definitely entered in it, um, and I wouldn't put you off him. I don't think he's. I don't think he'd be too far off a monkfish. He he he'd relish the trip anyway. No doubt about it. Right. Well, that's the Albert Bartlett. Um...